make sure that your expectations are right in this business because if you have the right expectations then that's going to take you far and and long in this business so we're going to talk about persistence which is a state of mind and this training comes from think and grow rich by napoleon hill if you've never read that book i highly recommend it i have it on audio i put it on all the time and on the way home from pit i was listening to it and it inspired me to get my notebook out and start taking notes because i thought this was really a great training to do for you guys and it was really even good for me too so um with persistence there are things that there's like many different components that go into how someone stays persistent and we're going to talk about those first so definiteness of purpose so you want to make sure you know what you're doing here um, and you have that that drive to get what you need done that will help you be persistent you need to have a desire desire is huge you know when I always talk about ignorance on fire is better than knowledge on ice and so that fire is your desire it's your excitement and the reason why you're doing this and you don't have to know everything to get started and just go for it because a lot of times um, when you don't know what you're doing, you have far more success than when you start learning things and you try to put them all together and then all of a sudden you think you need to be perfect and you need to get it all out right and, you know, and then you forget about your excitement and your desire and then it comes across as an infomercial instead of just someone that's really excited about their product or their opportunity or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, Self-reliance is a component of persistence as well. You need to trust in yourself. You need to make sure that you know you can do this. Um, you need a plan, so definiteness of a plan. So you need to map out what it is that you want to do for the month, what you want to do for the week, what you want to do for your day. Um, there's a quote about a plan. I don't know what it is. I'm tired. So there is lots of quotes about plans. And like when I talk about all these quotes, and I'm like the queen of quotes and one-liners and all that stuff, and those one-liners and quotes, they're so similar to each other and that's because they work and these people that put them out there and I'm, I have a wonderful one by Winston Churchill I'm going to tell you later there's a reason it's not that these people um, are putting these out there because they make money off of these quotes it's that they're actually trying to take what they have learned and help you and that's the name really of this business of this profession it's all about helping others and inspiring others and helping others get what they want in life because Network marketing really is the better way because no other J-O-B that you have, and you're going to go into the workplace and people are going to applaud your success. Oh, great day today, you know, you clean that person's, never mind, that's a nursing thing, but you know, you did a really good job today. No one's saying that to you. They're only telling you what you did wrong. And here we celebrate all of our successes. And that's what um, the big leaders in network marketing preach and talk about all the time is that that's why they say we have a better way. Not only is it residual income and it's, you know, work when you want to work and it's, you know, if you want to make more money you work harder and all that stuff on the other side of all that monetary thing and success and rank and all of that what we do in helping others and changing other people's lives and inspiring others to reach outside themselves and outside their comfort zone and grow as people that's the really real beauty of what it is that we do and we cannot lose focus of that in the meantime I mean yes we still have to work on ourselves but we work on ourselves so we can be better to help other people and so if anything that you get out of any of my trainings or any of this, this business or this profession or what it is that you have here, just know that we're not sitting up here saying we just want to motivate people so they can go and make us money. It's not about money because money can't make me happy. What makes me happy? and for most people is giving and giving doesn't have to be money giving means giving somebody the the strength or the courage or the encouragement or the inspiration that they need to go out there and be successful in their life whatever that means for them and it doesn't always mean money to them maybe just being successful to someone is having lots of friends that encourage them and support them maybe being successful means that you know they they're learning about themselves and they're taking the, the skills that they learn through this and applying them to their lives and they're having much better relationships with their kids and their husbands and their friends and they're giving up friends because they no longer serve them and they make them feel terrible and they've stepped out of their comfort zone and this is what I want you to learn and we're getting off topic as usual but anyways I just want that to be driven home for you guys because that is why that's my why is why I do this why I come up on here even though sometimes you know it's hard to come up with trainings all the time I continually do it because if just one of you hears what I say and takes that and makes their life better that's what this is for me so accurate knowledge this is also about persistence because when you know more you do more when you know better you do better and so know your stuff and when you know your stuff 
you become very confident in, in speaking about it. You be very, become very confident in approaching people about it. And you just become overall more confident in your life, which in turn makes you not a pushover and you're not being vulnerable and you're not being um, naive to people and all these other things. So as we learn about business and how to do this business, we are also changing our lives. And that's back to what I just said, right? Cooperation, working with others. Um, being coachable and that's huge it's nothing to come on here every week and hear these things and oh yeah patty said this and i know it it's an entirely different thing to go out and apply it or go out and teach it to your team or go out and explain it to someone that knows nothing about what we do and say listen oh my gosh i know you're not interested in my business but you have to understand what i'm learning apart from makeup and skincare and in my team in my, and growing my team and whatever i'm learning these skills and you never know someone in your life might want to learn about those things too. People, people pay big money to be coached by other people. And people pay big money for psychiatrists and psychologists and counselors and all that stuff. Imagine what you could take here and apply into your, into your life that is going to make your life that much better. Again, back with that. You see where I'm going? Anyway, so willpower. And willpower has to come with, with from within, right? You need to have obviously the burning desire and that gives you the willpower to go out there and do something. And so my suggestion with willpower is that sometimes for me personally, I need a symbol or like a talisman. I used to wear a bracelet and now I have this. And so if you see me doing this, it's because it's like my comfort zone. It's like it's like um, Superwoman or Superman with their shirt and they rip their shirt open and there's a big S on it and you just feel like that willpower when somebody does that. You need a talisman, you need something you can rub, a rock or a crystal or something that's important to you that somebody had given you, something that's on you all the time. Keep it in your pocket or wear it or do whatever and when you need that extra motivation or extra something that you are not having at the moment and you touch on it and you pull your power from that. And I know it's like psychosomatic, right? It's like... Um, it's like craziness, but we like it because you have to be a little crazy to be in life, right? Especially nowadays. So, you know, you have your symbol or your talisman or whatever it is that is important to you. It can be a shirt that you wear underneath. It could be whatever, your lucky pair of drawers. I don't care what it is. Get your talisman and pull on that for your strength when you don't have it in yourself. Habit. Habit is huge, 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 huge. People think 21 days um, forms a habit. It does not. It's 67 days. I don't know the science behind that. But I did this whole um, 67 steps thing with Ty Lopez. You've probably seen him on YouTube in his garage with the Lamborghinis and whatever. But he's actually quite a really smart guy. And he talks about it takes 67 days to form a habit. And so it's these little tiny things that we do all the time. And then we just get used to it. And then it just becomes automatic. Habit is huge. So those are the eight things. So there's my Winston Churchill um, quote. So success is doing... Um, or going from failure to failure without the loss of enthusiasm. And that's true because you know all successful people and you look at people like Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods and all these people that are huge in their sport and the things that they do. You know, how many times have they hit a ball? How many times have they sunk a shot? How many times have they been on the court and just practice over and over and over and over and over? That's habit. And eventually that habit brings us success and things come natural and then you just do it. They don't even have to think when they throw that three-pointer. It's going in. They see it long before it goes. And that's a whole other thing, seeing something in visualization we'll get there all right so lack of persistence will automatically equal failure without a doubt if you're not persistent at anything you're going to fail at it it's like when you learn to drive right if you didn't keep practicing you were going to fail at it it's like learning to walk if babies gave up the first time that they fell guess what they they would never learn to walk, but I guess what they have persistence. Why? Because they have a desire to get at all your furniture and your little things that you care so much about. And so they're just like persistent. They have that burning desire. They trust in themselves that they can do it. They have a plan. They're going to do it every day. Um, they're cooperating with the other furniture to get to where they need to go. And they're using things as, as tools to get there. Um, and they have the willpower to do it. You know, their muscles get stronger and they build their confidence. And of course, they're going to learn to walk because they've been 
persistent at, just same as you and I. We wouldn't be walking up right now if we didn't have persistence. And so you think about children and how persistent they are to get what they want. We need to get some of that so we can get what we want because we lose all of that when we grow up through life and people telling us no and, and all the negative messages that we get and we lose that fire and desire inside ourselves and, and we beat ourselves up. We're our own worst enemy and we need to be able to keep going and be persistent and, you know, look at it as learning to walk. So, obviously lack of persistence equals failure. So what are the things that um, you are failing at or what are you doing that cause the lack of persistence? So we're going to talk about those and there's like 18 of them, I think. 16. All right, so failure to recognize and clearly define what you want. And this is huge. This comes to like your why. What is it that you want? What is it that you're doing this for? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? You know, because when they say your why should make you cry. And it doesn't necessarily have to make you cry. I mean, if it does, that's fantastic because that brings back your desire. That brings back the reason that you'll jump out of bed in the morning eager to get out there and share your message and help other people and, and show them why you have this burning desire in you and what you want out of that. So make sure that you know what you want. Sometimes that's really, really hard. You have to know what you want and sitting down and saying, okay, what is it that I want? Because for so long, sometimes we think we don't deserve these big things. Or sometimes we have this really crazy relationship with money and we think, oh, well, people that make money, well, they're shysters and they've got it illegally. And, you know, they're oh, all those rich people, they're pretentious and whatever. But you know what? There's a lot of people with money that are really good people. Look at Oprah. I mean, she has a really good relationship with money and she uses that to help other people. Yes, there's bad people and good people when they have money and there's bad people and good people that don't don't have money, right? It's no different. You have to change the relationship that you have with money and know that you deserve everything that you want. And if your dreams don't make people laugh at you, your dreams aren't big enough. I mean, think big, go ridiculous with your dreams, but make sure that you can define what you want on paper, like, and be specific. It's not enough to say, well, I want to I want to be rich, or it's not enough to say that I want a new house, or it's not enough to say I want a new car. What kind of car? What kind of house? How many bedrooms? Where is it? Where is it situated? Did you build your own or did you buy it? You know, what does the furniture look like in it? Did you pick furniture for your new house? What's the kitchen like? What's the countertops look like? Be specific and really allow yourself to dream and allow yourself um, the permission to feel like that is possible for you because anything is possible for anybody. It doesn't matter who you are where you started, what your education is, I don't care because I've seen people go from the streets to riches. I've seen people go from riches to the streets. They've lost belief for their relationship with money changed. Whatever the reason, anything is possible. So dream huge. I don't care. If it makes people laugh, all the better because you know what? It doesn't matter what they think and we don't take advice from people that we wouldn't trade places with and if they're not successful and they laugh at you, well, what gives them the right, right? Procrastination is number two, with or without cause. We always have lots of excuses why we don't do something. My hair's not right. My makeup's not on point. I'm scared. I don't have time. Well, the kids needed something. There's always an excuse, right? And so we procrastinate. We put off doing those important things and we get busy doing all the other things that we think we're busy doing. And when people tell me they don't have time to do this, I'm going to do a video on that soon because it's really, it bugs me because people think that at the times we're, we're so, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, but you're on Facebook all the time. You're down the scroll hole of Facebook, you know, and I think we think we're busy because we're so overstimulated. Our brain feels busy because it's like buzz, 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 and the infomercial here, and commercial here, and TV, Netflix, and the kids, and yes, there are all those things, but there are downtimes in the middle, you know, turn your TV off. You know, stop scrolling on Facebook, stop watching a whole series of Netflix in one gulp, and take an hour or two of that time, put it into your business. You know, how many times have you waited in a doctor's office for an hour, two hours to see the doctor, and you're just scrolling on Facebook aimlessly? Hey, you could be working a business. You know, there's lots of people that have multiple children and multiple things going on in their lives, and they still show up here. And I know some of you on this training right now have lives that things are going on and you wouldn't think that you would have time to tune into my training and you did and I appreciate every single one of you by the way but you still show up and you have to make sure that you are prioritizing what is important to you is Netflix important to you then that's great because when you turn 65 then you can go to Netflix and ask them for your social security check or your old age pension 
paycheck check, they're not going to pay you. They want you absorbed into Netflix so that you can then recommend it to someone else and you can watch it and you can pay for it. So actually it's reducing your income because you're paying, well, I hope you're paying your monthly subscription and whatever, and they keep you in the this employee mentality because if you knew the truth about entrepreneurship and what you could actually have in life and the law of attraction oh my gosh well then that gap between the rich and the poor would get this much and then the big people that own all the things in the world would have less control over us and that's a whole other train of weird I'm not even going there but anyways you see where I'm going with that but this procrastination thing of people not having the time because I'm pretty sure in life if you don't have a nest egg already you need to be thinking about that if you want to live a comfortable life down the road and goodness knows how much health care is going to cost then or long-term care or looking after your own parents or whatever it's going to be now's the time to start thinking about how you're going to spend the rest of your life and what that looks like because I'm pretty sure um, the, the liquor commission is not going to pay your, your pension check and all these other things aren't going to pay your pension check so, so give your time and your focus to things that are going to help you you have to be a little bit selfish in that way you know because it's important to have them we don't think about it. it's not something that they teach in school you know what they teach us in school you go to school for so many hours a day five days a week to get a result you get your report card and you go to university or college and you go to school five days a week so many hours a week to get what your degree and then you go to work and you go to work so many hours a day so many days a week to get what your paycheck and so we've been taught to be employees and that's what people want big business wants employees they want people to work for less than their worth so that they can make the big money they don't want us to know what our worth really is and you are worth a lot and yes you may still have to work your regular job while you're building your fortune on the side but trust me do not give up on this and even if it's not centigents and I'm not saying you know you need to be with me and stay with me I'm just saying don't give up on a side hustle to go and just work for someone else's dream your dreams are important and you can have them all right lack of interest in acquiring specialized knowledge so well obviously when you think about well, I need to make more money, I need to go back to school. And so people that don't go back to school obviously aren't getting better jobs, and so it's still a job, but it's still better money, right? So you need to learn things in order to take yourself to a different level of pay. And you will always be paid based on what your knowledge is and what you're doing, right? That's why doctors specialize. They don't want the regular GP salary. They want to specialize so they can get the surgeon salary or the whatever salary. And so they acquire more knowledge to gain more income. And it's no different here. And that, but our income doesn't necessarily come directly from what we're doing with the skills. Obviously, we're applying those to our business and we're helping other people learn those skills as well to apply to their business and their life and that, and then you will get paid. Now, the one thing about this is that we do the work. We'll work 40 hours maybe in our business or, well, not this business, but say you work 10 hours this week in your business and at the end of your week, you work 10 hours, where's the paycheck? You don't get the paycheck yet. You might not get it for another month, two months, five months, six months. It doesn't matter. It's work that you're going to do that you're not getting paid. And this is why people quit. Because they're so used to clocking in, working their 40 hours, and getting that paycheck. And then they come here and they work that uh, work 40 hours, wherever, however many hours that is, and whatever time it takes them to do that. And they don't get the paycheck. And they're like, well, this doesn't work. No, it doesn't, because what happens is, is you work the hours and you put them in. And eventually, if you don't stop and you are persistent, you will get the big paycheck later on down the road. You will be paid in full for all of those hours and then some, right? So, and then you can work smarter, not harder, and you find you're not putting as many hours in, or it's easier when you're putting hours in because you're at the beach while you're putting hours in, or you're at home watching TV and, and texting people, or you're at a party with some friends and meeting new people and doing demos, and that's fun. That's not work. That's fun, right? All right, indecision. The habit of passing the buck on all occasions instead of facing issues squarely. Also backed by alibis and excuses. So a lot of times people can't make the decision and it comes, that comes too, kind of tied in with procrastination, right? And a lot of times um, you ask somebody, hey, do you, what do you want to do tonight? And they're like, um, I don't know, like, why do we have this problem with making decisions? Is it that we're scared we're going to um, hurt somebody's feelings? Are we scared of looking like being bossy? Um, it's not bossy. It's like knowing what I want. This is what I want. You have the option to say no. If you don't, that's your business. 
you know, it's not being bossy, it's just being assertive. And there's a difference between being assertive and being aggressive, right? Being aggressive would be like not taking no for an answer and shooting down somebody else's suggestion for something to do tonight. Being assertive is saying, this is what I would like to do, but I'm, I'm open to hearing what you would like to do and we can make a decision or we can draw straws or we can put the names in a hat and whatever. Um, but you have the right to make decisions. And you know what? You should make decisions and be sure about them. And then later on, you can change them. It's not, it's not a big deal. Change is inevitable. Everybody goes through change. We go through change all the time and we survived it. You know, so make a decision and stick with it and just go for it. And if it's not working, you reevaluate and you make a new decision. It's not a big deal. All right. So also too, when somebody ticks you off, approach them in a nice assertive way and say, listen, this is how I felt when you did this and set the boundary. That's being loving to yourself. That's not being mean to somebody else. And so sometimes we put ourselves last hoping that we don't offend other people. Um, and so what if, if we're all putting ourselves last, nothing's getting done. Somebody has to make the decisions. It might as well be you, right? Because people are drawn to that confidence and then they'll follow you. And so that's what you want. You want to be showing that you can make a decision and, and if not, if it's not working, then you change your decision and you go somewhere else. All right, the habit of relying on alibis instead of creating definite plans for the solution of a problem. And I think that's pretty self-explanatory, at least I hope. Um, you know, instead of making excuses for why something didn't work, just make a plan to put something else in place that may work better. Simple as that, right? And that comes in our business all the time. Self-satisfaction. All right, so if you're, this is basically about people who are only in it for them. What's in it for them? And you can tell those people a mile away, they're the ones that are only concerned about their own GSV and, and their own selfish needs and their own rank and their own this and this me, me, me. And yes, we set goals, of course, that is important. But the way that we get there is by helping other people. And you have to dig down in your team. And I see this all the time. You know, and it's, and I'm not saying that they're bad people, it's just that, we sometimes get so caught up in our own goals that we forget that there are other people that need us, there are other people that are following us, there, and, and that is the way to success is helping other people, and you need to take the, the focus off yourself and put it on that. And I think that comes from in life not feeling like we have this hole inside us filled, and so we continually try to throw things in there um, to fill it, and what we don't understand is that in order to fill the hole inside us we need to give what we need so if you you feel unloved you need to give love and if you feel like you don't have money you need to give money if you feel like whatever it is that you're lacking inside you need to give it if you're always fishing for compliments from people or putting yourself down hoping that they tell you no you're wrong you're really pretty no your hair looks good we're all guilty of it I'm guilty of it um, but I try to stop myself to give compliments give what you need um, because according to Napoleon Hill, there is no remedy for self-satisfaction and no hope for people who suffer from it. There is hope. You just have to put yourself, um, and this book was written like, I don't know, when dirt was just formed. So <laughs> don't worry about some of the things he says. They're old, but it still pertains to what we do today. Indifference. Oh, I like this one. Um, it's usually ref reflected in your readiness to compromise on all occasions rather than meet opposition or fight it. So that goes back to like being indifferent as well, where we would rather just go with the flow and do something we, we don't want to do rather than stand up for ourselves and say, you know what, I don't want to do this or I'd rather do something else. Um, you don't have to compromise all the time. It's okay to get your own way once in a while with everything that goes on with your kids, with your spouse, with your friends, with whatever. Make sure that um, you are valuing your own friendship with other people and your own relationships with other people because um, you deserve that respect as well. Um, the habit, this is where my markers come in. The habit of, oh, of blaming others for your mistake and accepting unfavorable circumstances as avoid, unavoidable. So this is huge. Um, we all know those people who are kind of like pity parties and life just happens to them and oh, that's always the way and if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all and they really feel like life is just happening to them, like they're just a bystander, that they have no control over anything, that, you know, it wouldn't matter what happened, they'd always get the shitty end of the stick, and we know those people, right? They're always sick, they're always complaining, they're always something going on in their life, there's always drama, I'm sure, I mean, and if you're identifying with any of that, I'm not naming any names, but I'm here to tell you that you need to take responsibility for your life. 
And you need to know that the decisions you make or the ones that you don't make and you compromise on or you're indifferent about are leading you to these circumstances in your life that are causing you to continually relive the same things in your life over and over. The victimization, you know, the woe is me, the sickness, nothing ever works out for me. Well, that's because you haven't taken initiative to say what you want. You haven't even thought about what you want. You haven't taken, you haven't got the desire to go after what you want. You are content to let life happen to you without participating. And yes, I'm um, sorry to tell you, and that may be a tough pill to swallow for somebody, but your life right now is the direct result of all the actions or inactions that you have taken in your life. And if you don't, and listen, that was a tough pill for me to swallow years ago. And until I did that, I seriously felt like a victim. I felt like a victim. I played the blame game. I was not ready to look inside myself. I just wanted, you know, my life was the way it was because everybody around me, and that's just how it was and so I was one of those people and it wasn't until I took responsibility for my actions for my reactions for my decisions for my indecision that my life was able to grow and through that um, what's the word I'm looking for not just the confidence that but just the I guess the set that I grew and in the confidence and this and the self belief I guess in myself the the belief in myself that I was worthy to have a good life and that I was ready to accept my part in how where my life got to that was when my life started to flourish and it flourished in a huge way so the the more work you do on that and the and the the deeper look you have inside yourself the more you're going to see results and it's gonna scare the crap out of you it's gonna make you lose friends it's gonna make you feel like you've made the wrong decision and you shouldn't be doing this but keep doing it it gets better so if, if I'm speaking to you right now trust me if you want to talk about it outside of here happy to do so all right um, weakness of desire due to neglect all right, so obviously you don't have a desire because you've been neglecting, it could be many different things. Your finances could be neglecting your health, it could be neglecting your appearance, it could be neglecting your relationships, it could be neglecting all kinds of things. If you're not willing to put some effort into things, obviously, then your desire to do things are going to be less and less because it's easier to not do it anything. It's easier to sit on the couch. It's easier not to make the phone call. It's easier not to do the home party. It's easier not to reach out to your friends. It's easier to sit at home and watch Netflix. It's easier to do a lot of things, but where is it getting you? Where is it getting you? You know, take the road less traveled because there are so many people ahead of us that have blazed that trail for us. And when you feel that you may not be as ready for that new trail as you are, there are a thousand different support systems that you can put into place that are going to help you through that. So please do not neglect yourself or your relationships. All right. So willingness to, oh boy. It's, it, okay, I'll just give you the, basically, break it down. It's basically the willingness to quit or even the eagerness, get that one, eagerness to quit at the first sign of defeat. And we know people, you know, it's like farmers, you go out and you plant a seed and you dig it up the next day. It's like, oh, wasn't growing. I'm done. You know, and we quit so quickly when something, you know, when we're uncomfortable with something, you know, we have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And people nowadays are so uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. It creates anxiety. You know, you may have anxiety yourself. I had anxiety myself. And it's because you would get so uncomfortable. Something was so foreign to you. It was like, you know, I, I, I know um, a person in my life that we would go to dinner could not sit in the middle of the dining room of the restaurant, would have to be in a booth to the side because they felt that everybody was watching them. And so they were so uncomfortable. It would cause great anxiety in them and they would want to sit at the sides where no one could see them. And I mean, nobody was looking at them and if they were, they weren't really thinking, they were off to the next thing to think about too, right? But so we get uncomfortable and all of a sudden we're like, Urgh! we put the brakes on because we're, we, we don't trust ourselves that we can handle anything. But I can tell you right now, if you've made it this far in life, there is nothing you can handle. And I know some of you have been through a lot of stuff. And when you come up with something that makes you feel uncomfortable, I want you to think back 
to your past and all of the things that you have overcome to get here. And I want you to tell yourself, there is nothing I cannot handle. I will figure it out as I go, but my desire to get what I want and to help others get what they want overweighs anything that I can handle or, or cannot handle. Because listen, you don't want to teach your kids that either, right? Your kids are looking at you, and if you quit every time you feel uncomfortable, what do you think they're going to do? Because you wouldn't believe what kids see and hear that we don't think that they're seeing and hearing, even subliminally, right? So our kids are looking to us for direction, and you know, especially nowadays, our kids need to have a backbone, and they need to have desire. They need to have persistence because of just the way society is, and you want your kid to go out in the world and take it on, right? Same as your parents wanted you to go out into the world and take it on. But we're just a product of what we came from. But it can stop with you. And you can be that voice of reason. And you can be that m mentor for someone in your life and your kids and their role model and go out there and show them, you know what, it doesn't matter what how you feel about something. You can change that and you can go and get what you want. And I'm going to show you how it's done. Terrified? As I am. But I'm going to do it because I know you're watching. You don't have to say that to them, but you know that they're watching. So if your kids are your big why, think about all the things you're doing right now that you're going to help them with down the road when they come up to their roadblocks. And you're going to think back to the time where you were scared to do a live video and you just did it. You're just like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to Nike it up. Just do it. And your kid comes up and he's in a track meet and he's like, Mom, I can't. I can't do it. And he's like, listen, you're just going to do it. Because at the end of that, at the finish line, you're going to have confidence in yourself. You're going to tell them. You're going to tell them whatever you told yourself to just do it, right? So think about that when you're when you want to quit. Lack of organization, blah 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 blah, blah marker marker, um, where they may be analyzed. I don't know what that means. All right, next one because that's the end of my marker stuff. Sorry. Um, the habit of neglecting to move on ideas or grasp opportunity when it presents itself. I need more information. It sounds too good to be true. Well, I know I should be doing this. I might have to hit play, but first I'm going to have a coffee. Um, when, the, when the feeling strikes you, do it. Don't think about it. Just do it. Um, when an opportunity comes around, take it. And you can be doing this when you're prospecting too and you're telling people, listen, I felt like you. You know what? I felt the same way as you. I know exactly how you feel. But what I found was when I jumped into this opportunity, things started happening. And I met these great people and I started learning this and I started learning that. And let them know what it is that you're doing here. But when that opportunity strikes, get it. All right. Wishing instead of willing. Someone says, oh, are you going lady this month? I wish. I hope. No. You work. Right? You don't wish. Wishing isn't going to get you anywhere. You can wish upon a star. That might help if, for kids, but really, kids need to know it's not just wishing upon a star. It's getting your elbows and pulling your sleeves up and getting in there and doing the work. You know, net work marketing, not Netflix marketing. Get it? I say it all the time. I love that one. I don't. I think I might have invented that one. I'm not sure. I should trademark that or coin it or something. All right. So don't wish for it. Work for it. The habit of compromising poverty instead of aiming for riches. And this comes back to your relationship with money. You know, money is not the root of all evil. If you've ever said that, that's why you don't have money. Because you're telling the universe that you think it's evil, and the universe is like, well, I don't want you going down that road, so we just won't give you any. Right? It's not the root of all evil. It, it's definitely up there with oxygen. We all need it, right? So, um... Change your relationship with money. Change the way that you talk about money, the way you see people who have it. Yes, we're inundated with, like, you know, rappers and rock stars and Kardashians and things that do for money. It might not be what you want to do with money, but think about what you could do with your money. And that's where your why comes in and the people that you will help and all these other things. Change your relationship with it and stop um, accepting the fact that, well, I didn't come from much, so I guess I'm just going to be like my mama or my daddy or my family or my history or whatever. You can change your history. Nothing is written in stone. You decide where you want to go with this. Um, searching for all the shortcuts to riches, trying to get without giving. So I think that's pretty explanatory. You know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are no shortcuts 
shortcuts. There are no shortcuts to success. You have to take the stairs. But you know what? You take the stairs one at a time. You eat the elephant one bite at a time, and you will get there. You know, people want to cut corners. And you know what? We get to cut a lot of corners. You think about all the great leaders that came before us and all the successful people that share their knowledge with us, and us with books and webinars and you know, you go to events and you hear from this, they are cutting our corners. They're telling you, this is what didn't work. I tried everything you're going to try to do. And I'm going to tell you, this is the path to success. If you follow what I tell you to do, you will get there faster. You're still going to have to do the work, but you will get there faster. So stop trying to cut corners. It's, there's no magic key to success. Yes, if you can come up with a little way um, to reach more people, that's great. But you're still going to have to do that work of building relationships with people, doing lunch demos with people, and getting to know people, and all these other things that there is no shortcut to. So you have to keep the fundamentals basic and keep doing them um, while you're still building your business. And it's the same in life. There's no shortcut to anything. You have to do those simple steps to get where you want to go. So eat the elephant one bite at a time. You don't have to like try to like do that. Um, what's that restaurant in Vegas where you get in free if you're over a certain amount of weight and you have to wear a Johnny shirt? Like you don't need to be like eating the whole big plate at one sitting because you think that that's going to get you quicker to the finish line. Because if you just eat small bites once in a while, you're further ahead than the person that can't eat for a week after that, right? And actually there's a story about that. There was this race and it was like a 10... Oh, it was like a 10-day marathon, and all these marathon runners, they train for it, and they get their bodies in shape, and they have all their little snacks that they need along the way, and their water, and their sleeping bags, because they know the body needs to rest, and so they go through this 10-day marathon race, and the, you know, the fastest time, I don't know what the fastest time was, but we'll talk about that for Anyway, so the fastest time is like, you know, pretty long, and so this farmer decides, I'm going to run the race, comes, and he's got like these, I don't know, hiking boots on. And he, he didn't know anything. He didn't even study what they, they had to do. He didn't know anything about stopping to rest at night. So what he did is he ran like all night. He stopped for two hours to sleep. He showed up like, I don't know what it was. It was like three days earlier than the rest because he didn't, he didn't know what everyone else knew. He only knew that the, the more he ran and the less he slept, the faster he would get to the end. So that's really interesting, isn't it? All right. Um, fear of criticism. Oh, this is huge. Failure to create plans and to put them into action because of what other people think, do, or say. Yeah, so we sometimes will, even especially people closest to us, like, oh, you're doing one of those, or oh, who do you think you are, whatever. And so we, we are so scared of what other people think of us and that we might look like a fool or look what whatever, but you know what? You don't even know that looking like a fool or doing something that other people wouldn't do may inspire somebody. And sometimes people want to hold you down they want to steal your dream because if you did it, they would have to take a look at themselves and think about, well, if they could do it. I could probably do it, but I'm not, I don't want to change. I don't, I'm content to live my life and just watch some Netflix and maybe pay all my bills every month and drink a case of beer every weekend, you know, so don't look at the way people look at you or feel about you because you, you technically can't read their mind. You really don't know exactly what it is that they're thinking. If they have the nerve to say it to you, excuse me, please don't talk to me like that. If you're not going to support me, then please don't say anything to me, right? Because you can be guaranteed when you hit success, those will be the first pretty people to call you to ask you for some money that you don't have. So you, you just don't. They're welcome to join your business, but you don't have it to give them. So trust me from experience, the people that will knock you down will be the first ones coming asking for something when you have wild success. And you may be an inspiration to someone that is on the verge of change and they see you doing it and think, hmm, I could do that, right? Okay, so those are the 16 things, or well, 15, because I kind of messed that one up. It's not my fault. So here's what I want you to do. We're getting close to the end. Now, I want your why to explode. I want it to explode. I want you to think about your why. I want you to get super excited about it. And I want you to put your blinders on and say, there's nothing that's going to stop me from getting that. And that could be anything. It doesn't have to be monetary. It doesn't have to be physical. It could be anything in life. But I want you to be so laser focused on that why that I want you to feel it boil up inside you and explode. And then every time you get up in the morning, I want you you to feel that boil up inside you and I want you to explode it out and I want you to get to work.
tell someone your goals, someone that you trust, someone that's going to encourage you. Don't tell some idiot that's going to tell you you're crazy. You don't even have to. It doesn't matter to them. Tell somebody so that you can be held accountable to get that. So when you're feeling the four D's, you remember what those are? That you can, someone can say, listen, you got one of the four D's going on. Remember your why? Didn't it explode? Couldn't have exploded today. So let's get back to your why, why you're doing this. Do a vision board. Mine's up on my wall. There's things I've already crossed off, and there's some camel riding that's going to be crossed off really soon. Do a vision board. I don't care how wild and crazy the pictures are that you put on it. Put them on there. Get specific. Get right down to the furniture if it's a host. Right down to the car and the interior. Go on and design your car if you want to. Make sure you have a visual of it so when you are through your day, you can look and say, Oh, look at that, Thailand. I'm going to go back to Thailand. And you never know how that will happen. And trust me, there's a story from The Secret of the guy that made the vision board. And he had this big house on the vision board. And four years later, they had moved to a new house. And his son was sitting on the box, kicking the box. And his vision boards were in the box. He said, Daddy, what's in the box? He goes, those are my vision boards, son. And he said, let me show you. And he pulled the vision boards out of the box. And he started to cry. Because there on the vision board was the exact house he had just moved into. I know. So you never know. It's not your job to know how. It's just your job to focus on the end result. I want you to put the work in. I want you to make some sacrifices. I want you to watch less TV. I want you to book some more demos. I want you to do the income producing activities that you need. And because that is the only way to success, you need to make sacrifices. There is nobody in business that will say, oh no, it just worked into my Netflix series. It just worked into my life. No, they made sacrifices because it was important to them because they had a burning desire to get their why and to help other people see that what we do is a better way. So I want you to make some sacrifices. Nothing that's going to take food off your table, whatever. But if you make sacrifices, you're going to put more food on your table. So don't even worry about it. Make some sacrifices. I want you to take a stand. I want you to take a stand in life. I want you to stop being a bystander in life so that others won't be intimidated by you. I want you to pick your chin up, I want you to look forward, and I want you to look around you, and I want you to stop playing small. You are not made to play small. You are here for a purpose. You have, were the best swimmer out of millions of sperm, and you reach that egg, you could be a billion different other people, but you are you. You got here because of something magical and miraculous, and you are not just put here to watch Netflix and die and pay some bills and die. You have been put here for a purpose, and I want you to find it. I want you to stop playing small. I want you to go out there. I want you to have the confidence that you need, and I want you to get it. Whatever it is that you want, I want you to go for it. And I want you to not give up ever on whatever it is that you want. Like I said, whether you're here with me or you're somewhere else, whatever it is, keep going towards the happiness, towards your dreams, towards a better life, towards being a better person, towards helping others see the light and to be better people for themselves. Keep adjusting. Keep learning. Keep moving forward. And I'm going to leave you with a quote from Maria that she so eloquently put at Pitt. I want you to borrow the belief that I have in you until you have it for yourself. You can have it. I believe in each and every one of you. You all can do this. And you can have my belief in you until you have that in yourself. And when you have it in yourself, I want you to go and lend it to someone else. That's it. So go out there. Make it a great week. Have an awesome weekend. And I will see you all, you guys all very, very soon. Love you.